Last week we looked at creating this model here, which I 3D printed, came out really beautiful, but some really valuable Fusion 360 techniques here that I showed. And so the finished product is this here where we have this container and you can see it prints in multiple pieces here. So three separate bodies, the container part with this Greek uh, inlay pattern here. And so here's the pattern that we made and we have this uh, lid that I 3D printed from Wood PLA. It came out really nice and uh, really perfect fit onto it. So last video, uh, we ended, let me take this timeline back right here. So this is where we kind of left off, where we were, only had two bodies here. Um, and uh, I showed you, the main um, tutorial there was showing you how to create this inlay pattern to give you a perfect wrap around uh, around a cylinder. So it's a really great technique there that I show. If you haven't caught that video yet, make sure to check it out. It'll be the video before this one on my list of uh, videos. So check that out first and then come back here because we're gonna continue this design here. So let me take this timeline and bring it back to the end and you'll see where we are now. So notice this uh, key pattern here is now flush with the container here. So I'm gonna show you how I did that. And you also may have noticed uh, some chamfers here, which is a really, really great strategy to apply to your parts when you're trying to avoid printing uh, supports. And uh, just some techniques I wanna show here, especially in creating this key pattern, uh, that Greek key pattern here. Um, and the, the approach um, that I use to get that to fit onto this container here. Remember, we're talking two cylinders here, so um, how to get this to uh, be able to then just snap into place. You'll notice here if I zoom in, we have a little gap in between there um, to allow that to snap, and there's also a slit here um, so that when we do 3D print this, we can sort of extend it over this container and then allow it to snap into place. And the other big part is you'll notice here that I've got my own support structures that I made. And so this was from printing this using regular slicer supports and then they were just a pain to remove. And I thought this was a great application that you can use to create your own supports in Fusion 360 and make it so much easier as you can see here to remove this. Um, remove these supports. So I want to show you the techniques that I use there and you can see here that these supports don't connect to these edges here and there's a, a really easy way in Fusion 360 to be able to generate these. Um, so you want to you know have these um, this strategy sort of in your back pocket when you need it because it really comes in handy. So I've got um, it's a bit of a long video here but there's so much gold here that you're going to want to stick through the whole thing because these are techniques you'll be able to use uh, over and over again that'll really make you just a, a very efficient designer when you're trying to uh, make something like this. Okay, let's jump right in and uh, continue with this project. Uh, before we do that, just a huge thanks to my Patreon supporters. It really allows me to be able to set apart some time and uh, dive deep into these tutorials for you. So uh, again, thank you. And uh, if you are not a Patreon supporter and you enjoy my tutorials and find them valuable, I do have a link below where you can join. And in addition to these YouTube videos, I also post other tutorials to my Patreon page. And sometimes I dive deeper into these projects and explain things in a little more detail. So you'll have access to additional tutorials there and, and projects that I do. So uh, link is below. I uh, really appreciate all the support. And again, huge thanks to my existing Patreon supporters. You guys are amazing. All right, let's jump right into this design. All right, so here's where we left off last time. So we've got two bodies here, our lid and our container. And we see here that the container and the key pattern is still one piece. And also the key pattern here is, is outside the container. We want something like this, or if I bring the key pattern and it's flush with that container and we can print them separately and they can, it can just uh, snap in. So let's continue with that here. So the first thing we need to do, or the next thing we need to do is separate the key pattern here from the container so we have two separate bodies. Um, there's a couple ways to do that, but what I'm going to do is take advantage of my split body tool here under the modify menu. So modify down to split body. I'm going to select this body here and now I need to choose a splitting tool. 
Now the splitting tool I would want would be this face here or maybe this edge here, but it's not gonna let you select the same feature from the body you want to split, but we can select the sketch here. So um, actually our first sketch, sketch one if I show that, that gives me, let me just uh, untoggle so you can see it a little clearer here. Um, let me untoggle the body, sketch one, that's where we created that circle. So if I bring back the container, you can see it right there. So this circle edge here, I can reference that from the sketch. So what I'll do is let's go back to modify, down a split body, body to split, this container splitting tool, as long as we have that sketch turned on, we can select it here. You can kind of see it highlight blue. It'll extend that it's the splitting tool up if we have this checked and then we'll click OK. And now we should see that we have two bodies here, the key pattern by itself and the container. So that's the result we wanted. And we're gonna have to rename these. So the container is already named container. The key pattern, we'll call that key pattern. And there we have it, quick and easy way to split this. And so the next step now is we want this key pattern to be inside the container. We wanna basically, uh, we wanna end up where we can cut one piece from another, but it needs to overlap the same area. So here's how I'm going to do that. Let me untoggle the container there. And I need to basically extend this face inwards and then um, also extend the outside face inwards so that it occupies more interior space here. Um, so to do that, we'll go to modify and we're gonna use our uh, offset face here. And then I'm gonna choose the inside face. I'm gonna go in two millimeters. And now I'll have to do the same thing with the outside face because now this is a total of four millimeters uh, and uh, thickness there and I want it only to be two. So let's just repeat that offset face. I'll select the outside and here I'm gonna do a negative two offset. And there we have it. Now we can see that they both occupy that same space. So we brought that in two millimeters. All right, now that we have that, the next thing I need to do is to perform a Boolean operation to cut this key pattern. Um, to leave us with the, the hole here to be able to snap it in so we can actually perform um, or have an inlay and print them uh, separate to be able to snap the key pattern into place. So to make that cut, I can go right now and do the Boolean operation, but if you take a look here, let me, actually this will be easier to explain if I show this design here. If we take a look at the finished design here, you can see um, this edge here this one and this one, they would give us issue if we we're trying to print those, right? Let me, actually I have a chamfer on there now, but I'm gonna go to the timeline here and I'm gonna just uh, find that chamfer and suppress it. So you can suppress it. And now we can see that these straight edges here, if we try to print those, right, this is an overhang, a um, couple of issues, this is curved and also this is way too long to bridge. And a way we can solve that is uh, by just uh, applying a chamfer. So we would need to apply one to that surface, this surface, and this surface here, and that would allow it to print. So uh, um, applying chamfers is a great way to avoid having to use uh, supports uh, when you're trying to 3D print your parts. So that's exactly what I did here. Let me go back to that timeline and unsuppress so we see that chamfer being applied. So that way I can at least not have to print supports on um, you know one of these uh, uh, models here. Um, but to apply the chamfer, here's what the approach I'm going to take. Instead of doing the Boolean operation and then applying a chamfer, because then I would have to do it to this surface and also to the key pattern here so it would fit. Instead, I'm just going to do it once and I'm going to apply it to the key pattern here and then create the Boolean operation. And in that way, the, the container here will have the chamfers already applied. So the way you have to kind of think about this is almost in, in opposite terms because we're going to apply it to the key pattern and then it's going to be subtracted from the container part. So here, instead of applying it to the parts that we would think of in the container, which would be these top faces here, we're going to do the opposite. So it'll make sense once I actually um, do it and you'll see it. So let's go ahead and go to modify chamfer and I'm going to select all these interior bottom edges here. 
and I did try doing one set and then doing a circular pattern of all of them, but for some reason it wasn't working with chamfer. So um, instead we're gonna go ahead and just do it this way. Actually, let me just do all these edges. So you're saying I'm doing the, the bottom and then the middle and then the top. And these are the, the top edges of the top faces. So the interior tops. So let me select all of them here. So you should see we have should have a ring around the bottom, the middle, and the top. And now I'm gonna do a two millimeter chamfer there. Click OK. And you can see all these are chamfered. Okay, now that we have that chamfer, I could bring in that container and then we'll go ahead and go to modify down to combine. And we're gonna change operation here to cut. Um, target body is our container, tool body is our key pattern. We want to make sure keep tools is selected, otherwise it'll delete the key pattern there as our tool. Click OK. And there we have it. Now we can untoggle the key pattern and we should see that we have these chamfers automatically applied here to the container, which will allow this to print with no supports. Okay, so that's that. And uh, the next thing we'll need to do, let's bring in the, uh, just the key pattern here. If we want this to be able to snap into place, we're gonna have to um, apply an offset here so that the key pattern is just a little bit smaller than the container. So to do that, we'll go to modify down to again, offset face. I'm gonna select everything. Oops, if, it, if you ever get this lasso select, just change it from um, the freeform selection to window selection here and then we'll draw a box around the entire model here. And then I'm gonna hold uh, the control or command button and unselect the front and inside face. So we just have the these uh, inside uh, edges here um, selected. I'm gonna do a distance here, an offset of uh, negative 0 0.1. And there we have it. Now if I bring in that key container, you should see that if you zoom in, there's a little gap between the two bodies and that's exactly what you want. So that'll allow this to snap fit right in. Okay, so a couple more things we need to do here. Let me untoggle container. We wanna be able to print this and this is gonna be a nightmare to print. And as I showed, uh, you know, we could automatically generate supports, but it's gonna it's gonna be a lot of supports and it's, it really gave me a hard time. I did try that first and um, it was a pain removing them. So I said, you know what, let me try to create my own supports here. I think this is one of those examples where modeling your own supports um, is really the solution here. So what I did was um, I want to just create some pillars here to support this and, and it's just uh, the very strategic places. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to create a sketch on this bottom face right here and we'll orbit so that we can see it. And now I'm going to project. So P for project here, let me untoggle these other sketches. P for project and I'm gonna select, I've got specified entities, uh, specified entities selected. I'm gonna select this surface here. It's gonna give me an outline around it. So now I can untoggle the key pattern body and I'll just have this. And here what I'm going to do, I'm gonna draw a couple lines here. So one line here and go ahead and, and if, make sure you move it so you're not getting it to snap and give you, you can see here I've got a, uh, a vertical constraint there in blue. I'm just uh, move it till you're not getting a constraint being applied. I'm gonna do the same thing to this side here. See, I got a parallel constraint and then a, a vertical. Just move it so there's no constraints there applied. And now uh, I wanna set a dimension between these two, but notice if I click this line and click this line here and I do a dimension, it gives me an angle because they're not parallel. So what I can do is come here, grab my parallel constraints and make them both parallel. And for some reason it throws it here to the side, but we can just drag it back in. Um, so now I can go ahead and select these two and give it a dimension and it'll let me do that. Um, so um, using your constraints here really comes in handy. I do have a free constraints cheat sheet, which you can find linked below, which describe all the constraints and, and what they do. So make sure to check that out if you haven't yet. I'm gonna do the same thing with this other one here. I'm gonna grab my parallel constraint, make them both parallel and then if you don't see it, because for some reason it wants to drag it away, just bring it right back, D for dimension, and then we'll go ahead and dimension those. And I'm also gonna do an inside one here. 
Um, for this one, I won't worry about making them parallel. I'm just going to draw these two lines here. Um, again, um, I'm not going to snap a constraint here because it'll lock it into place. But if I want to do a dimension in this case, because I can't do these two lines because they're not parallel, I can, I can do point to point and it'll let me actually let's redo that because I want to show you here you can do depending where you drop that dimension you know you've got a straight and you can it gives you this sort of um, parallel but i'm just going to do it from here this sort of straight line there and do five millimeters um, and then i can move these in you know and then you can also it lets you like you can adjust these if you want so if you didn't want them to be parallel it's it's not crucial that exact angle but maybe we'll do something like this and then if i click these i can just drag them inwards so, okay, I just kind of wanted to show you that. And that distance looks good to me here. And then uh, what I can do is I'm gonna stop sketch here, or finish sketch, bring that sketch into view. Let's also bring the key pattern body into view. And then, so here's the magic here, or the secret sauce of um, creating these uh, support structures. I'm gonna hit E for extrude, and I'm gonna select these three profiles here. And now what I'm going to do is extrude these down to this surface here. So I'm gonna choose extend type. I'm gonna go to object, select this chamfered face here. It's gonna go all the way down. And instead of start here at profile plane, I'm gonna choose an offset. And I'm gonna give this an offset of 0 0.4 millimeters. And did you see what happened there? So now let me turn here. It didn't start it right from that plane. It gave me a little gap there of 0.4. I'm going to do the same thing with the bottom here. Watch what happens. Um, maybe it'll be easier to see if I um, look from the inside here. So you'll see I have another offset here right under the uh, extent type. And I'm going to make this um, 0 0.3 millimeters. And you see there now that, actually, let me, it would have been easier to see it from this angle here. So let me just orbit. Let me bring that back to zero. Keep your eye on this part here. It goes straight to that uh, that bottom surface, that chamfer, and I will do 0.3. It backs it up 0.3. So the reason I'm going 0.3 is I did try both of these as 0.4 because this is chamfered. Um, it didn't stick well in some cases to it, so uh, I just backed off a little bit, um, made it closer to that edge, and that point three, it worked for me where these pillars actually stuck. Um, so the key here, these numbers I'm giving you um, really worked well for me, so I'll save you the step of having to kind of um, go back and forth and, and, and experiment. It allows it to stick um, where it'll support it, but it doesn't fuse to the part so that you can easily come in and just break them. So that's where that, that getting that gap right, you know, is, is, uh, is important there. Um, so if you do have to tweak, it'll probably be like within like 0.1 millimeter one way or the other, but that's the strategy here that I'm using to create my own supports and, uh, taking advantage of these options here from um, starting from an offset and adding that offset in there is really the way to go. And I'm gonna do the same thing here with the top surface here. So let's really quick just create a sketch here. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna project this surface here. So if I click uh, P for project, notice I highlight over here, it's gonna give me a line on the bottom there showing me where that meets. And then I'll just create another line here Right there, you see these two lines, and I'll dimension these from point to point. It's uh, orbit so we can see. I'll just do five millimeters there. And then uh, since I didn't make these parallel, I can just adjust this angle, not crucial. Finish that sketch, I'll do the same thing. Extrude, let's flip this around so we see it. Uh, let's do it one more time. Start is gonna be an offset. That offset is gonna be 0 0.3 millimeters and extend type to object. I'm gonna extrude to this chamfered surface there and that offset is gonna be 0 0.3. It's gonna back up and that's exactly what we want. So now that we have these three support columns here, what we can do is create a, a circular pattern. So we'll go to create pattern, uh, circular pattern. I want my pattern type to be bodies and uh, the objects are going to be these three bodies here. My axis of rotation, I'll just select this bottom circle edge there, and I want six of those. So we'll go ahead and click six. 
I've changed the quantity to six, click OK, and there we have it. And you'll see because these aren't attached, these come in as all separate bodies. Okay, and then if you wanna, you can untoggle all of these, but here's a, um, a shortcut. If I right click on keypad and I go to isolate, it just gives me that one object and then I can bring in the lid and the container and I have that here. Okay, and then finally, I'm throwing a lot at you here, but a lot of really good stuff. The last thing I, I did was just put a slit in the middle of here because in order to get this to fit around the container, I have to kind of stretch it over it and bring it in and then bring it um, you know, together to actually snap into place. So what we're going to do is I'm going to create a sketch on this bottom surface here. So create sketch right there. And then I can just come in and again, project this face here because I want to extend that line to where it meets right here. So P for project, select this face and I get a line right there. And then what I'm going to do here is just draw one more line again, edge to edge. And I'll go ahead and actually make these parallel and drag this back and then I'll do a distance from these two lines as uh, 0.2 millimeters. And there we have it, finished that sketch. And now I need to bring it back into view here. Now I can simply select this face there, that profile, bring it up, extend type, change that to all, and that'll put a cut right through there all the way up. And here the key there is it's same principle, these don't meet. so. They're not going to completely fuse together, um, you know, but they might like when you extrude them as you 3D print, they may touch, but you can easily just pull those apart. And now I can actually sort of bend this open and then bring it around the container and snap it into place. So, okay, th these are the strategies I use to create these. Um, I know I, I kind of threw a lot at you here, but uh, some very valuable techniques that can be applied to 3D printing. Finally, let's just bring in the uh, appearance option here and I created some favorite appearances so I'm just going to drag the sky blue to the container, the white to the pattern and then I have this uh, wood material, this ash to the lid and you can see here uh, I've got my lid, got my container and then I have that key pattern here that will be the inlay that will slap, <laughs> slap snap right into place. So that's uh, that's the approach. And then I'll show one more thing really quick, and that's printing. Um, let's go back to that key pattern and go to unisolate, and that's going to bring in all those support structures. So if you want to print all these together, um, what you would do is um, whoops, um, come up here in your browser. Let's drag this. Uh, if you don't see the top, drag this up. I've got a bunch of bodies, so you get a little scroll bar here. Um, the top where it says the name of it, right click and go to save as mesh and i'm going to send this straight to my 3d printer so uh, you can see my application here is my prusa slicer i'll click ok and doing it that way whatever you have toggled on it'll actually bring those right into your printer and since i want all these bodies um, you can see they come right here all together um, the only um i think addition that i did here to make this print well is i added a brim so if I slice that, you'll see there's a, a brim around here. So that this will actually stick on the build plate because this is such a thin um, profile here, surface area that it has. But that's that. Those are the techniques that I used to create this model here and create my own support structures to print that key pattern and uh, had a really, really great model and a fun project that I enjoyed doing. Oh, uh, one thing I did actually, let me see, did I do that yet, is uh, add a fillet here to the bottom there. So let's just do that really quick, modify fillet, select that bottom edge, maybe do like a five millimeter fillet, and there you have it. That'll just make that bottom a little bit stronger. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did and you learned something, uh, let me know in the comments uh, what you learned. And if you have any questions on any of the steps I took, uh, leave that in the comments as well. I've got a bunch of resources down below if you're looking to learn more with Fusion 360 and designing your own models, whether you want to start with my free uh, constraints cheat sheet that I mentioned, I've got the link below to that, 
or uh, my quick start course and also my more advanced Fusion 360 courses. You'll see the link below to all of those. And again, huge thanks to my Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. And if you're getting a lot of value from my tutorials and want to support me in creating them, uh, consider checking out my Patreon page as well. All right, guys, I'll be back in a few with a new tutorial for you.